It's almost... I'm late. Well, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm seeing my parents tonight. Both of them. Mom and Dad. A kind of it's-your-life bender. I'm not seeing them together, mind you. Not a good idea. Definitely not a good idea. Once long ago, this trumpet player, who I'll probably also see tonight, told me, The rocks in her head fit the hoes in his. Not anymore. See, they haven't seen each other. I haven't seen him in... Okay, <laughs> so it's complicated. Plus, if I see past all the history, I sense. And this one really screws me up. Things would have been better for them if they'd never had me. But they did. I'm on the scene, as my old man would say. And even though there are no clean breaks, I swear, tomorrow morning, I'm out of here. I have a farewell dinner at my mom's in the zip code of my youth. Don't start, Nick Lickard. I'm not coming over there. Mom, I wasn't asking you. I can't stand hearing him play. I just want you to know I was going to. Are you new? I had a dream you saw him. And you know what pissed me off? He had an age. He'll never age. Nothing gets to him. Well, I Don't just... stick out the him, Clifford. You know he gaslit me. Well, everybody thinks your father is so sweet. Oh, poor Jean. Clean Jean. Sweet Jean. How he suffers with crazy Terry. No one said that. That rat bastard gaslit me. <laughs> How does he look? Is he eating? What? Your father, in the dream, he looked thin. How should I know? I haven't seen him. I made lasagna. There are some containers in the freezer. He can't even feed himself. Will you be home for Christmas? I don't know. No. Well, you better get going. Have a good time. Oh, and there's some boxes in the hallway with old photos and, and magazines. I thought you could use them for your art project. Thanks, Mom. And remember tomorrow on the plane? I know. Say hello to the pilot and I board. It keeps them alert if they meet the passengers. Keeps them responsible. I know, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>
years actually. Time flies when it crawls. Guys, together. Can't think of the last time that happened. Well, you know it wasn't at a family vacation, or a restaurant, or a party. Your father never took us anywhere. Mom, please! All of them. If they're not playing the club date, their idea of a big get-together is when they sign for their unemployment check. <laughs> <laughs> she can be a little dark, but she was usually right. Last time I saw these guys together was at unemployment, nine years ago. The old 92nd Street office. The musicians called it Club 92. I'm 21, out of college, out of work, online for my first unemployment check. I glance over there and spot my father. It's 1977. As a jazz musician, he's sort of always there. There's a national endowment for the arts, which is money for classical musicians, and there's the New York State Bureau of Unemployment, which grants money to jazz musicians. <laughs> it's a two-tiered system. Ah, thank you, Jones. You get a load of this. My boy is signing for his first check. Hey, He's at that moment prouder of me than I have ever seen him. Today, I am a man. To celebrate, the old man takes me out afterwards. The guys sit at a table in the back. You can always spot them. They wear caps, a lot of brown and tan polyester, and they always sit as far away from daylight as possible. My boy, my boy. Did you see him? Mazel tov. Hey. <laughs> It's to be a special day. It'll prove to be the only time I'll see my father pick up a check. Well, not that Al or Ziggy or Jonesy picks up checks. You see, musicians don't pick up checks. They don't dance. They don't buy when they can rent. They don't worry about clothes or shoes or weather, except how it might affect alternate side of the street parking. They order soup. I'll, uh, I'll have the soup. Is your special suit? What do you care? Four suits, Patsy. Kid, you want a suit? You get five. Oh, wait a minute. Four suits. One suit for Ziggy. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you, schmuck. And uh, extra crackers. <laughs> Soups are coming. They have to wait ten minutes for them to cool down. They're horn players. They can't run their chops. Around that time, I noticed that Jonesy who has one eye and used to play trombone is staring at me. Or at least my arms. Jeannie, your kid's got a great rope, man. What do you say to an ex-junkie who compliments your veins? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, he does. Christ, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. By the time I was his age, I'd already shot out all my veins and reduced to shooting between my toes. Yeah. What are you eating? You should do much to ask. No, maybe by that time I was still between my fingers. Thank you. That's better. I lost my eye in the war. <laughs> you spent the war teaching retarded bugler's revenue. Hey, the home front was pretty dangerous. Yeah, that's Dickie Smith. <laughs> uh, piano player, of course. Huh? Now, uh, it's his notice. And Dickie was clean at that time. A Mormon. A uh, Mormon. This means a little pot a couple times a day, benzodrine inhalers, booze. He was clean, but he fished his pants about being called up. You see, there was a very big war going on at the time. Enormous. Mm -hmm. And little Dickie, he didn't want any part of it. So he goes to Jonesy here, and he says, uh, fix me up. Well, he figures if he's a junkie, he's automatic four it. Got it. I tried to warn him. Kid, I said, it is so good, you don't even want to try it once. Which is exactly what someone told me when I first started. Which, of course, made me want to try it all the more. Anyway, I showed the kid the ropes. What I don't know is he's got someone lobbing the pennies. Every time it rains, it rains. Bennies from heaven. <laughs> so he's throwing back like a quart of bourbon a day, beer chasers. He spends three weeks just about killing himself. Then they postpone his freaking physical. By this time, he is pretty strung out. Yeah, he can't even stop, even if he wants to. Which you never do, by the way. They show his main line, and he's taking uppers, and he's drinking, and he's losing weight because he's vomiting so much. Yeah, he's got the shakes, and he hasn't slept in, in weeks, and finally... They, they call him in. He can hardly drag his ass up the stairs. He's down to like 95 pounds. His eyes are like bulging out of his head. He's lost his hair. He is a total freaking mess. They take one look at him. They say, kid, 
No, no point in even giving you a physical. Get this. <laughs> You're too <laughs> fucking short! <laughs> Musicians love this guy. <laughs> too short! Did you get it? He was like 5'2". <laughs> None of us even thought about it. Piano. What difference did it make? <laughs> they didn't even notice he was a junkie. Mm. Me, on the other hand, I wasn't so much a junkie at the time as an addict. Uh -huh. Now, there's a <laughs> subtle distinction. Yeah. Well, the southern bases were so hot, you had to wear short sleeves all the time, so I couldn't shoot in my arms. So on between my toes, between my fingers, finally into my eye. Hey, I would argue this makes you a junkie, but... So I had to shoot in my eye. It only lasted for a while. And that's how they got the Purple Heart. And partial lifetime disability. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, even though he's already got disability, he still comes down and picks up his unemployment check every week. That's a work ethic. Thank you. I said to the sergeant, if I've got to get sent back to Ohio... And he was from the Bronx. They all were. With a jaundiced, pus-leaking sore where my eye used to be. Jesus Christ! Can anybody eat with this? <laughs> my eyes have it. These are my role models. My authority figures. My... Hey, kid. What kind of horn do you play? Bite your tongue. Someone has to make a living. Yeah, I remember when you wanted lessons. Your old lady said, no son of hers would do to another woman what he did to her. Not a rat, bastard! <laughs> He's still my boy. Managed to get 20 weeks on the books as a painter. How's it? Uh, collages. School job. I couldn't pay you. He got a scholarship to some painting school. R-I-S-D, grad school. And instead, he's going to write for TV, right? No. That, that, that's a pretty good feel. Hey, your father and I were going to do that once. I know, I know. But it's not TV. It's advertising. Maybe. I'm up for something. Okay. TV pays pretty good. Well, if I get the job, yeah, like 1200 a week, but... Money stops through cold. You cop that kind of bread, you work for three weeks, you can lay out the whole year. You were listening to Jazzonomics. The theory that... You keep your nuts small, you pay your dues, you get to blow your horn. Wait, wait, wait. 1200 a week, you mean a month, right? No, man. As long as you got a place to flop, the rest is... There is no rest. From the time I was four, I knew that the family was headed for financial ruin. You gonna finish your crackers? From the time I was six, I and everyone else knew it was up to me to save us. I always heard about people making money with money, but I kind of figured that was a sick head to get into. Jazzonomics is the reason why I can't afford to take the IRSD scholarship. Someone has to yeah, pay Yeah, 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 but, but how did you collect next year? If he only works three weeks. Here's a beauty part. I already got my 20 weeks in, so every week I'm on the books, I lose a check. This kind of talk used to drive my mother crazy. Because when the kid does his TV game for three weeks, quits, then I do club dates under his name. The union will never know. Well, you work 17 weeks under his name. He gets his 20 weeks in. That way you collect. Yeah, okay, he pays you cash for the gig you do under his name. Yeah. You get your weeks in, I'm... Dad! Dad, it's not TV, it's advertising. And I haven't gotten the job yet. And even if I do get the gig, I may not quit. I mean, it might be we're trying to stay. I have no so. Uh, here you go, fellas. No, 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 Patsy. My treat. Huh? My boy signed for his first check today. Oh, did you really? <laughs> Congratulations, team. Drop by later, pay I'll buy you a drink. My father covered the checks. Keep them in your pants, boys. And then he does something I've almost never seen done. He stares at me. He just stops and looks as if he sees something. Some promise, or sadness, or... He's gone now. Back to when he had no son. Back to 1953. Before the Beatles. Before Elvis. When these guys were like ball players, Always on the road, written up in papers, endorsing trumpets and downbeat. Bands passing each other in the middle of the night, even traded side men. One first trumpet and an alto, and a second trumpet and a tenor to be named later. It was such a trade that my father finally returned to his usual room in New York, nine dollars a week at the Hotel on the Bottom. This old Upper West Side guy. My mother used to tell me that he would come here for a couple of weeks <coughs> until he was clean enough to go home to his mom in the Bronx. You see, the Nevada used to let musicians practice in the basement. Right now, there's a young flautist who thinks she has a place all to herself.